Good evening lads and lassies, the Irish Demon here back with another video. Today we are going to be having a look at a video from Level Earth Observer. Now this video is about Elon Musk. It's got nothing to do with cryptocurrency, so don't worry, strap in and enjoy. I'm going to hand it straight over to him and we'll break this all down, shall we? Today I'm going to get to know the space genius Elon Musk a little bit better. I've got two clips of him speaking, and then I've got a third clip which kind of highlights where we get a difference in Elon. On one hand, Elon can be a smooth-talking, confident man who articulates himself incredibly well and oozes confidence. Yet on the other hand, Elon can be exactly the opposite. Unconfident, muttering and stuttering, almost embarrassed by what he's saying and what he's part of. These two different sides to Elon are very revealing. And the third clip we're going to see is going to highlight why. But first, let's see Elon oozing confidence, making perfect sense. And globe believers, listen to Elon here as he makes perfect sense. Listen to these wise words coming from your top boy. One of the biggest mistakes people generally make, and I'm guilty of it too, is wishful thinking. You know, like, you want something to be true, even if it isn't true. Um, and so you ignore the things that, uh, you, you ignore the real truth because of what you want to be true. Um, this is a very difficult trap to avoid. I fell for it as well, Elon. I wanted large standing bodies of water to have the ability to display convexity upon its surface. It can so I didn't let it go and stand by the things that are simply true. Very empowering stuff. That way you're not ruled by the ego. But isn't it incredible to see how well Elon can articulate himself, how much confidence can ooze from this man when he's actually talking sense. Let's see the clip once more and then we'll move on to space Elon, where strangely enough he's supposedly a genius, but when he discusses space, this smooth-talking, well-articulated man who oozes confidence becomes a muttering, stuttering clown. All right, well, we're not going to watch it a second time because we've already seen it. If you guys want to watch it a second time, go back and re-watch that portion of the video. Uh, I have some ideas already as to why Elon's incredibly articulate in that particular piece. He does have his moments. We all know that. If you've seen the Joe Rogan podcast or some other videos that Elon Musk appears in, sometimes he can be quite awkward. We'll get to that in a minute. So let's just skip over this replay from Level Earth Observer. Observer, whatever. Who, who cares? Like, really, who cares? But anyway, let me just explain this to you. Uh, why do I think Elon Musk appears to be very calm and collected in that particular video? Uh, it's obviously something, it's one of those conversations that he has all the time. This guy appears in the media all over the world every single day of the week. So he's used to say, saying these set pieces, these kind of motivational set pieces. There's a huge difference between something that you've said a thousand times over versus something that you're saying off the cuff. That's the first thing. The second thing is Elon Musk does have Asperger's and he even says it himself, sometimes it affects him more than others. Another thing, he's a multi-billionaire who heads up some of the biggest companies in the world. He's an incredibly busy man and with all of that comes tiredness. Sometimes you're tired, sometimes you're not. But we'll get back to all of that in a minute. Let's see what this level, we'll just call him level from now on. Just, yeah, well, let's see what level's got to say. And now Elon, the space genius. Gone as the well-articulated, smooth-talking man that makes sense, replaced here by a babbling fool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. That, I mean... After these great words that were spoken, um, I, I, I'm not sure I have much to add this, uh, from, from, you know, Bob and Doug and Jim. Uh, but uh, I, I do think what, what this heralds really is fundamentally uh, a new era in space flight, a new era in space exploration. We're, we're going to go to the moon. We're going to have a base on the moon. We're going to have send people to Mars have, and, and make life multiplanetary. And I think... 
listen to him and listen to how desperate these space fans and organisations are. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Even matey behind on the right there with a the mask. Look, he's looking on as if to say, have a word, Elon. This, this day heralds a new age of space exploration. That's what it's all about. Uh, from people at SpaceX, people at NASA. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> hey, this is, I mean, so much. We're, 18 years. This has been eight, 18 years to, to finally fly people to, to orbit and back. And, um, I mean, I really came here because I just wanted to see Bum Doug, to be totally frank. <laughs> it was like, oh, thank goodness. Um, like my entire adrenaline, it was just dumped, you know. <laughs> it's like, like, thank God. You know, and I'm not very religious, but I prayed for this one. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, so just once again, thanks everyone uh, at SpaceX, NASA, FAA, every, everyone, Air Force, you know, that, that played a role in. Gone is the smooth talking, confident, well articulated Elon, replaced by a babbling fool that looks like he's either had too many coffees or been on the Colombian marching powder. Clearly doesn't believe in any of this nonsense, clearly uncomfortable clearly almost embarrassed by all of this. And it's quite obvious why. Because Elon, like any of these faces of space, is constantly getting stitched up. Or maybe, just maybe, he was incredibly emotional, having been the man to head up the first program of its kind to put human beings not only into orbit but to the ISS and return them safely to the ground. I'm willing to bet that in the days leading up to their return Elon did not sleep or eat or rest at all. I'm sure he was watching data constantly to make sure that those two men would make it back to the planet safely because it would decide the future of spaceflight, the future of his companies, the future of everything for these people. So of course it's nerve-wracking. So not only is he probably extremely extremely tired as I just said but obviously he's incredibly emotional he heads up the first commercial company to put people into orbit and connect to the ISS that is an incredible feat that is an amazing thing for a person to do and I would be incredibly emotional if I was in that position too so you can't blame the guy and we all know that he does have problems with his speech from time to time. He ums and ahs a lot and things like that. And he has to really think about what he's saying. Like myself, he trips over his words sometimes. So again, there's a huge difference between a set piece, run-of-the-mill TV show that he does every week and a live event, which is arguably the biggest of event, event of his life up until this point. And you try to compare the two. It, it's, it's a ridiculous comparison to make. Now level here uh, seems to think that this is because Elon is covering up the fact that something went wrong with a rocket but let's let's have a listen and then I'll break it down just after and we've only got a look to the last couple of weeks when Elon's supposed SpaceX rocket had a bit of space debris go straight through luckily for Elon and everyone else the debris was CGI and went straight through the rocket but of course it's antics like that what turn a well-articulated, confident man into a babbling fool because he's the representative of that charade. And clearly, it's ridiculous and the things it represents, the globe, are scientifically impossible. Now, just like every other flat earther, this guy has decided to not bother to do any research whatsoever. So what he's claiming is that the famous video of the bit of space debris that nearly hit the crew to capsule or did hit it possibly we'll look at that in a minute uh, is the reason why Elon Musk is acting strange in this video now that's not possible and I will tell you exactly why because the video he's just shown of Elon Musk is following the demo 2 mission at which launched Doug and Bob up to the ISS now that happened back in August of 2020 when they landed and then he had this news conference. The problem is that this near miss or potential hit of debris that we saw on the famous video, which our flat earth friend here is gonna show us in a minute, 
didn't happen until the 28th of April of this year. Now, I'm no maths genius, but I'm pretty sure Elon Musk isn't able to see seven months into the future. Is it seven months, six, seven months? Who cares? Even if it was a day, it wouldn't matter. How could he possibly have known about this seven or whatever months it was before that mission even took off? Literally 10 seconds of research and you could have figured that out. Anyway, let's let's watch it anyway and then break down his claims about CGI. So that's where we get the two sides of Elon. One hand, when he's making sense and believes in what he's saying, he's confident, articulates himself great and makes perfect sense. But when he's dealing with space, got no confidence in it, unfortunately becomes a babbling fool. Sorry, Elon, but you do. I get it. I wouldn't want to represent that charade. I really wouldn't. Nah, you'd just rather represent this charade. And of course, as we know, you're constantly getting stitched up by the CGI department. And this is why poor old Elon becomes a babbling fool when discussing space. He's forever getting stitched up. Like all the faces, representatives of space, they're constantly getting stitched up in one way or another. And in this instance, Elon gets turned over by a bit of CGI space junk. And in doing so, this CGI space junk highlights the absurdity that is NASA, the ISS, SpaceX, and of course the globe. And of course, reveals why Elon, when discussing space, becomes a babbling fool. Who'd want to represent this nonsense? Here it comes, the CGI debris interacting with the booster that had just been jettisoned and then look straight through the rocket whoosh and again watch this straight through elon's rocket looks like a hockey puck straight through here we go whoosh straight through elon's rocket no wonder poor old elon's a babbling fool when he discusses this nonsense Alrighty, so let's break that down. Now, I'm not sure what the official line from SpaceX is. It's clearly a piece of ice, some kind of frozen something on the side of the rocket. Obviously, the rocket uses liquid oxygen that freezes in the vacuum of space. You can do that yourself at home. If you don't want to believe me, that's totally fine. It is hockey puck shape. I agree. Now, he says that it goes through the rocket because it seems to go in front of something to the left hand side of the camera that is because the camera is inside the shroud of the trunk of the dragon capsule now i'm going to display a picture right here for you and let's break it down so here we have the dragon capsule at the top you'll see it says capsule so that's the main portion that's the vehicle itself and that is where the astronauts or in the cargo case the cargo is you can see the lovely windows there and below you have the trunk now the trunk is an unpressurized portion of the upper stage where they keep unpressurized cargo they also keep uh, some other like little satellites and things that are piggybacking in there inside the bottom of that shroud is where the camera is mounted now let's have a look at a quick screenshot from his video and you can see here that there is like it looks like a piece of orange rubber or something like that so that is clearly the demarcation between the outside of the spacecraft and the inside of the spacecraft it's obvious from his video that the object floats inside of that so inside the shroud and here is a picture of that shroud and you can clearly see that orange rubber gator or o-ring or i'm not actually sure what it is but it looks like orange rubber of some description here's a couple of images of it being loaded up and things like that so obviously that's where the camera is so obviously whatever came in came inside the shroud simple i, I don't understand why that's so hard it just goes inside behind the camera or out of the camera's field of view that's really simple, right? I mean, comment down below. Let me know if I'm wrong. Is that not really, really straightforward stuff? So anyway, lads and lassies, that's where we will leave Level Earth Observer for today. And maybe he should do a bit more observation given his name has 
observer in it. Uh, do a little bit more research, Elio. And as before, there is an offer still standing for you to come on this channel if you'd like to prove me wrong or do a response video to show me where I'm wrong as I have done for you. It is amazing that I have never seen a Flat Earth video that has stumped me still to this day and I don't anticipate that that will in fact ever happen. Anyway, lads and lassies, thank you so much for joining me. Make sure to hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below what you think of the video. If I missed anything or got anything wrong, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'd really appreciate it. Also, uh, just a side note uh, with your continuing support, which I really do appreciate. I have now also got memberships on this channel available. You should see it down below somewhere. And, uh, and also my Patreon is there for anybody who'd like to join for as little as $1 a month. The, uh, the, every little bit helps and I really do appreciate it. So thank you so much. Hope you have a great day and slancha.